What's up everyone, it's your boy Nornrad89 here bringing you another video and for today's video we are going to be going over the rise and fall of WCW which is a documentary that came out in 2009. This is a wrestling documentary that goes over the promotion World Championship Wrestling WCW which was the biggest competitor for WWE going through the 90s. So today we're going to talk about my feelings on it because this is the first time I've ever checked out this documentary. I'm a huge wrestling fan. I grew up on during the Monday Night Wars. So I was prominent like with Stone Cold Steve Austin, Sting, you know, Ric Flair, Undertaker, you know, that whole battle of like switching between the channels. Which program are you going to watch? Like I remember those era at that time very fondly. So today we're going to talk about this documentary. So let's get into this. Roll it. Rise and Fall of WCW is a documentary currently streaming on Peacock that goes over basically the beginnings and the end of WCW World Championship Wrestling, was, which was a promotion that went prominently throughout the 90s. That was the heyday of that championship, of that promotion with having the wrestlers and competing with WWE. They even had Stone Cold Steve Austin at one time in the early 90s, Stunning Steve worked for them, you know, Paul Orndorff, Mankind, or like Cactus Jack at that time and everything. So WCW really had their hands on just about every wrestler that WWE had at some time to Vader. So it was really like who was, they were competing with who had the better offer and, you know, who had the better wrestlers and what did they do? And for real, this this documentary is really fun because it has a lot of good interviews. And like I said, it goes all the way back to the heyday. Also talking about the territory era, which was when wrestlers was able to travel to just different territories and work for them like the AWA or Georgia Championship Wrestling and all that kind of stuff. So it goes from there to the beginning of WCW all the way through all the different promoters and owners that they had like Ted Turner and everybody and stuff like that. And mainly the biggest problem for WCW is that for a long time that the people that owned it and the people, the broadcasting place that it was on for television, they really didn't know what to do with a wrestling kind of show. You know what I mean? They really didn't see the money that you could be making, you know what I mean, and all that kind of stuff. They weren't wrestling fans or anything like that. They were more just business people. And then it really kind of took off in the era when Eric Bischoff came in because he was a wrestling announcer previously, but he's also an entertainer type dude and a businessman, so he knows that side of things. So he really propelled WCW into a new era. So when it comes to that era, basically the Monday Night Wars, Nitro, Eric Bischoff wanted to do everything different from the WWE and he states that, you know, in this documentary that they did their show live, you know what I mean? They, he wanted it to be more reality based instead of, you know, fictional fantasy type based like the characters that Vince McMahon and WWE were putting out at the time. So it's really fascinating to get behind the scenes stuff on that, you know. I really do wish if I could say one negative that this documentary, to be honest, it could have been probably two parts. I could have seen this being two parts. It's about like, I would say, you know, like at almost two hours, I want to say, or like just over two hours, but this could have been like a two-parter type thing. You know what I mean? Part one, part two, because it definitely has a lot of lore and a lot of stuff that kind of just breeze through in the latter years. They kind of spend a lot of time with the setup of WCW, kind of the businessmen and all the people that bought it and the very beginnings of getting to the Monday Nitro era. And then once they get to the Eric Bischoff era, they kind of breeze through that. But there are other documentaries on Peacock too about the NWO and a lot of other stuff where they have more interviews because this one just has clips and parts of interviews, you know, with like Diamond Dallas Page and Eric Bischoff, you know what I mean? Goldberg's in here a lot too and stuff like that. So even Hulk Hogan. So yeah, there's some really good, awesome interviews in this documentary. Yeah, for me as a kid, that was a really, really fun time being able to, like my grandpa was a huge wrestling fan and that's how I got introduced to it. So being able to watch television and watch Nitro and watch Raw and kind of switch back and forth. And we got to a point where Nitro actually premiered an hour earlier than Raw for time ratings or time slot time. So Nitro would come on for an hour first and then it would be like, oh, did you enjoy it enough? to then switch back to Raw, you know what I mean? If you wanted to check up or did you stick with Nitro kind of thing, you know, it was really a fun time to be a wrestling fan and all that kind of stuff. And I like WCW because Sting is one of my favorite wrestlers. I also like Ric Flair in terms of being villains and the Four Horsemen, like that's a really cool aspect of WCW. And 
Also for me, it has like this kind of rock and roll, kind of crazy vibe, very entertaining, kind of Vegas style to it. I don't know how to really explain it. You know, it is very flashy. Like WCW is very flashy. And like, probably like I said, the fact that it's live and you know, it's very exciting. It was almost like reality television but for huge wrestling fans. So that's what I think was a big appeal for it. also like the NWO storyline. You can't just breeze past that. That was one of the biggest things because they reintroduced factions to wrestling and it became a bigger deal because we've had factions before that, but NWO was the one that kind of took us into almost, you know, the Attitude Era thing with NWO, D-Generation X, the Nation of Domination. So there are so many factions that were kind of, like I said, birthed out of that whole concept of, you know, Scott Hall, Kevin Nash, and Hulk Hogan taking over WCW and then them just adding more members and stuff. So it's like that really became a very popular thing in like, you know, 96 to 98 in terms of what wrestling was all about. But NWO also was a big part that contributed to the fall of WCW because I think it was a storyline that Eric Bischoff and them, they kind of just, they ran with it and then they didn't really know what to do with it. You know what I mean? They got too big for their britches. Their heads got really huge and they just kept adding members and doing these ridiculous storylines and the world title just got not defended that much because once Hulk Hogan hood it, held it, he held it forever and he barely even defended it. So that's one thing that I could also say. I was never a huge Hulk Hogan fan because that he's like equally parts the greatest and worst thing for wrestling. That's kind of how you describe him because he's such a monumental figure and especially for WWE and propelling wrestling into a new era, the golden era. But when it comes to the NWO era and what Hulk Hogan did for WCW, I think they were really the downfall because they weren't willing to move past him like you know what i mean and go over that and have somebody like conquer nwo and defeat them hulk hogan just always running the politics backstage and everything you know you always hear thoughts and rumors and interviews of that allegedly that he was very you know p popular with the bookers and stuff like that so hulk hogan was able to flip the you know the matches and get wins and make sure his title wasn't at risk and stuff like that so i think that was a real reason why wcw ended up going in the tank and wwe ended up purchasing them but this is a really cool documentary like i said i had a fun with it i read it rated it on my letterbox i gave it a three and a half stars so for me in terms of a three and a half stars that's like a 7.5 or an 8 out of 10 rating this is a fantastic documentary especially if you're a huge wrestling fan i just wanted some more interviews especially some of the nwo people there's not a lot of interviews with like scott hall and kevin nash they're in like some clips and some stuff but there's not as much there's a lot of other wrestlers that i wanted to hear from and i like said i feel like it could have been a two-parter because they just kind of breeze through the latter half of WCW. They focus more on like the beginning half and the creation and them getting to, you know, the Dusty Roads and selling it to, you know, like, you know, Watts and everything. And then they got it to Turner and like the TV deal and how television was such a big prominent factor in propelling wrestling into the next era. So there's a lot of focus on that. And I wish there was just as much with the ending half of WCW, like, you know what I mean? So that's one negative for me and like said, more interviews, more stuff. So definitely could have been a longer piece, like definitely over four hours. I feel like this could have been a four and a half hour type documentary. So, but a 7.5, eight out of 10 rating is still solid. Like I said, I was hugely entertained. It was great to go back to my childhood and relive a lot of those moments with those wrestlers and all those iconic, you know, the Goldberg streak and like NWO and Sting and Diamond Dallas Page, the Diamond Cutter and, you know, just reliving so many fantastic moments. But let me know in the comments section, are you a wrestling fan? Let me know who's your favorite wrestlers, what are some of your favorite eras of wrestling and all that kind of stuff so we can have some discussions down in the comments section and be sure to like and subscribe and poke that notification bell so you're notified anytime I post a video because I'm going to be doing more videos like this too possibly more videos about gaming and everything about wrestling I still love my horror and I'm going to stick to that but I'm, and movies and rankings and reviews but I'm also going to do stuff for like I said wrestling and gaming content as well like I might have some stuff like that coming down the pipeline so be sure to stay tuned to the channel but most importantly I want you all to have a safe and happy day
Peace out.